Bible, he had two titles. So I can be indecisive too. So work with me this morning. I want to talk about reaching up and reaching out. I want to talk about living into the eschaton. Work with me. When someone dies, we often don't know what to say to the bereaved. Sometimes we say the wrong things. We say inappropriate things. Church folk ask members of the bereaved family questions like, was he saved? <laughs> questions like this trouble me. Let me be honest. They annoy me. They irritate me. They bother me. They make me angry. When we ask questions like these, we act like we know the answer to the question. We ask questions like these when we judge others based on our perceptions, based on what we think, based on how we see the world. Asking questions like these is like placing ourselves in the role of God. So what should we say when, when church folk ask these kind of questions? What do we do when folk don't know any better? The answer to this question is simple. Let God be God. How did Tupac say it? Only God can judge me. Only God can judge us. It's not our job to judge others. Our job is to love one another. This question says a lot about how we feel about salvation. You know, we can be selfish about our salvation. How the folks say it, I'm kin to the king. I'm part of the family. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. My spot is reserved. I'm VIP. If you listen to church folk closely, what they're saying is, I got mine. I got mine and I ain't sharing it with nobody. It presumes that salvation is something for us to hoard, to hold on to, to safeguard from others. I got mine and I don't, I don't have to worry about nobody else. Folks, I come by to ask you this morning, is this what God asks of us? Is this what it means to be saved? Is this what we should be doing in our faith walk? Is this how we live into God's will and purpose for our lives? When people ask such questions, we need to remind them that God is God. Only God can judge us, and for that we are thankful. God has a plan and a purpose for our lives. Each day, we ought to ask ourselves, how can I live into God's will and purpose for my life? Is it by clinging to my salvation, afraid that it will somehow slip away from me? Is it by being afraid that somebody will somehow take what is rightfully mine. How can I do God's work in my earthly journey? Our scripture this morning tells us how to live into God's will and purpose for our lives. The scriptural passage starts with a description of the Eschaton, a fancy word for the end time. Eschaton is one of those seminary words that nobody can pronounce. You know, you know how we say police rather than police? I just say eschaton. Make it simple. It is a description of the final 
event in the divine plan. Right. It is the end of the world. Yeah. It is the end of history. Yes. It is a time when God will determine the fates of all individuals according to the good and evil of their earthly lives. We might think of our scripture this morning as, as scatological. Mm -hmm. It reminds us that God is God. Right. It tells us what God has done, is doing, and will do in his relationship with us. All right. All right. It reminds us that we are living in the tension between the already and the not yet. The kingdom of God is already at hand, uh -huh. but not yet fully realized until Christ returns. Mm -hmm. Our scripture describes what will happen when Christ returns. Uh -huh. The question before us this morning, mm -hmm. how do we live into the eschaton? Uh -huh. How do we live into God's will and purpose for our lives? How can we do God's will? Do we notice how this passage starts? The passage describes what will happen when Christ returns. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of glory. It starts with the word when. It reminds us that the kingdom of God is already, but not yet. It reminds us of what God has done, yes, is doing, yes, and will do in our lives. Right, yeah. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, oh, yeah. then he will sit yeah. on the throne yeah. of glory. Yes, sir. We don't know when. Only God knows when. Yeah. You hear all these people yeah. making these predictions about the end of the world or, or the coming of Christ. If somebody tells you that they know when this is going to happen, you need to walk away. You need to walk away. Because only God knows that. But when it happens, I'm so glad. When it happens, God has a plan for each and every one of us. Do we notice how many ways this passage refers to Christ? He is the Son of Man. He is Lord. Yes. He is King. Yes. As the Son of Man, He trod the earth in human form. Yes, As the Son of Man, He uh -huh. knew suffering. Amen. When He returns, He is Lord. Uh -huh. He returns as King. He returns in His glory just like He told us He would. Yes, he this is why we raise our hands in yes. worship. We are looking forward to anticipating, yes. yearning yes. for God's yes. glory. Yes. How many of you want to be part of God's glory? Yes. We should always want to be part of God's glory. We want to be part of God's plan. Yes. We want to be in relationship with God. When we reach up to God, we are living into the eschaton. Yes. We are living into God's glory. Glory! Hallelujah. Can you say it with me? Glory! glory. The Lord separates the sheep from the goats, then we will know God's glory. Amen. Our scripture this morning reminds us that it is God's job to judge, Amen. not ours. Amen. It is God's job to separate the sheep from the goats. Only God can judge me. I, I'm with two guys. Don't play like you don't know it. Only God can judge me. Beloved, I can tell you that. I'm thankful for that because I don't want you to judge me. And I don't want to judge you. We reach up to God. We reach up to God because we want to be in relationship with God. When I say we, I mean us. I mean it is not all about you and it's not all about me. It's about all of us together. It's about us reaching up to God together. We come together each week in worship. We come together each week as the body of Christ. We come together in a shared commitment to Christ. We come together for a shared encounter with the living God. We come together to love God. We come together to love one another. 
we come together to be in relationship with God, we come together, whether we realize it or not, we come together to be in relationship with one another. We can't go around talking about, I love God. And we mistreat one another. When we, when we have a relationship with God, we can know God's peace. When we are in relationship with God, we don't judge others. When we are in relationship with God, we understand our shared human failings. Ain't none of us perfect. Anybody here perfect? Can I say it like this? I ain't perfect, but you ain't either. When we are in relationship with God, we work to getting along with one another. Somebody out there hears me this morning. Somebody hears me. Beloved, I want to tell you something about what it means to be in relationship with God and what it means to be in relationship with one another. As we know from the pastoral prayer, a number of our members are currently in the hospital. Some of them are in deep places. Y'all know what I mean. For some of them, this may well be the final leg of the journey. In my visits, I try to remind them that they are living into the eschaton. I try to remind them that God has a plan for them. I try to remind them that God is not through with them yet. That God is still with them, even in this deep place, in this dark moment. I remind them that they are not alone. That God is with them. I remind them that we, members of the Centennial Faith Community, are still with them. I remind them that we're in this together. I remind them that they are in our thoughts and our prayers I remind them that we love them. But let me tell you what happens when I visit these people who find themselves in these deep places. As I talk with them, they strengthen my faith. In the face of uncertainty, struggling with pain, they exhibit faith. They exhibit a quiet peace. They witness to me. They teach me something about what it means to be kin to the king. They teach me that being in relationship with God means being in relationship with one another. As I talk and listen to these folk, I understand what it means to be the body of Christ. It means loving one another. Amen. In good times and in bad, we want to be caring. We want to be compassionate. We want to honor God in worship and prayer. We want to thank God for the blessings in our lives. We want to put God first in all that we do. We want to build trust and communication. Can I say it again? We want to build trust and communication in our faith community. We want to care for one another in moments of distress. We want to remind people who encounter the pains of this world that God is still present in their lives. We want to put God at the center of our relationships with one another. You put up with me, and I put up with you. Right? Can we say it like that? Beloved, if we want to inherit the kingdom, we have to go outside the walls of the church. We have to live into God's will and purpose for our lives by reaching out to others, by loving others. Christ called on us to be his hands and feet in a broken world. Come ye that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. 
I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. Yes. I was in prison and you visited me. Yes. Beloved, we can't judge for it. God does not call on us to judge those who are hungry or thirsty, those who are naked, or those who are in prison. That's not our job. That's God's job. Has anyone ever seen the Eddie Murphy skit about ice cream? <laughs> Somebody here knows what I'm talking about. Eddie <laughs> tells the story of how excited he and his friends were when the ice cream truck came. He tells how they made fun of the kids whose parents couldn't buy ice cream. How, how does he say it? I got some ice cream. I got some ice cream. But you ain't got none because you was on the welfare. So sometimes church folk act this way about God's grace. I'm saying that you ain't. Our scripture this morning helps us to see that we don't want to be that way about salvation. We don't want to be that way about God's grace. We want to share the ice cream. It's not our job to judge those who are hungry or thirsty, those who are naked, those who are in the prison. We want to share our blessings with others. We want to take God's word to others. We want to take God's word to the world. We want to feed and nurture people outside of our church. And let me say, you know, we, we're doing these things. Our, our Good Shepherd's ministry, I'm not talking like we ain't doing it. We're, we're doing it. But we, we can do more. We want to do more. We want to feed and nurture people outside of our church. We want to serve God by serving others. We want to have compassion for others. We want to be a caring and compassionate church. Our scripture reminds us of why we serve earth, others. Truly, I tell you, just as you did to one of the least of those who are members of my family, you did it to me. Amen. Beloved, this is why we can't judge. We can't be mean to one another and be in relationship with God. We have to share our ice cream with one another and, and with others. Yes. Beloved, it's simple. When we give to others, we give to God. When we give to God, God gives to us. How do we say it? We get what we give. When we, when we wonder why people treat us the way they do, ask ourselves how you treat people. If we love others, we love God and God loves us. God includes us in his kingdom. God blesses us. Our scripture of this morning tells us what God has done, is doing, and will do. God has a plan from the very foundation. If we want to live into the eschaton to inherit the kingdom of God, we have to love one another. Beloved, are we living into the eschaton? Are we sharing God's grace? with others. God has a plan for us. I want to be part of that plan. Amen. Is there anybody here who wants to be part of God's plan? Amen. It's simple. All we have to do is to love God and to love one another. Amen. Remind yourself you ain't perfect neither. Amen. All we have to do is reach up to God and to reach out to one another. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. Amen.